Well, good day and welcome to you. It is August the 22nd. I hope you're having a great day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing. And as always, I want to welcome you to Search for Signs and quickly point out if you want to know more about this information, if you want to see if there's any truth to this information for yourself or whatever, I have included links to websites that give you really good background information to get you started in that direction. So hopefully you'll uh, look into it. All right, now I want to thank Cynthia Jaworski, Nick Younger, Mark Hill, Mr. Good Sleep, S Super Base One, Mark Gregory, and my Trail World Teacher Galactic Federation for posting comments and asking questions, as a couple of you guys did. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. And of course, if you have a question you'd like to ask or a comment you want to post, feel free. All right, now let's get on into it. Let's see. Mr. Good Sleep asked, I am trying to find an interview with Maitreya. Is there any? Yes, there are. <laughs> That's the simplest answer to that question. But then I would have to go back to the first sentence. Why are you trying to find an interview with Maitreya? You know, that would be my question back to you. Maitreya himself said, Mr. Good Sleep, if you run after him, you've already lost him. And that could be physically running after him, after seeing him in your life, uh, to doing everything you can to try to find an interview with him. I know it might seem very bizarre and very odd this that that should be your approach to not try to find an interview. You'd think that since I've been talking about my as I've been talking about him, answering questions and those kind of things, that I would be eager to tell people where to find him. But it's important that we don't. Okay, now, Benjamin Krem, when he made the announcement that Maitreya had given his first interview on American television, he did this in January of 2010, he said, and I quote, to not seek him out, to not tell other people when you recognize him that that's Maitreya. But he did say, one, he's not using his name. He's not being introduced as Maitreya. Two, he doesn't look anything like the pictures that we might think he looks, you know, to think that he looks like that. And then three, he's using a very common Middle Eastern name, like the equivalent of a John Smith. Now, you got to understand the reason why it's important and the reason why how he can do it, okay, and how he can he can slip under the radar and speak these truths that he's speaking to people. Let's take a look at those, okay? So first thing, why is it important that we don't seek him out or don't tell other people that that's Maitreya? It's important from Maitreya's perspective that we listen to what he has to say in simple honesty and not because we think he's Maitreya or heard from someone else, more importantly, that, that, that he's Maitreya. And then follow what he has to say. That's not gonna, that, that doesn't have any long-term benefit for the person. And in the end, it won't work. So if, if it was important for us to know who he was on TV, we would already know who he was on TV. Right now, it's important for us to, to want for the world what he's advocating for the world, which is peace. That's why people such as myself, Benjamin Krem, and, and so many others who, who know about this information, to talk about it with the people in your life from that perspective. The need for peace, the need to end war forever, the need to end hunger forever, the need to solve our environmental problem. So if you want to know what I would say would be the best thing for each and every one of us to do in regards to this information, it would be to read Benjamin Krem's books or read what he has to say online, listen to his videos, those kind of things, but also to read what his master said about Maitreya's priorities for humanity. That's the best way to do it. And then when you do see him on TV, you'll recognize him for who he is. And rec But it will be because you want for the world what he's advocating for the world, not because... I or somebody else told you that says that's Maitreya. So that's the that's reason why. And it's crucial that we don't do this. So when Benjamin Krem made that announcement that he had given an interview on TV, people, of course, did exactly the opposite of what he wanted, and they went crazy trying to find anything that they could find on Maitreya. 
they found an interview on Democracy Now. It was a uh, Raj Patel, who's an Indian fellow with an English accent. He had been living in London, um, spoke <laughs> Indian dude or Middle Eastern looking guy, speaking with an English accent about social justice. And they're oh my gosh, that's him. You know what I mean? And they nearly ruined this man's life because they were just. I mean, he just got bombarded with a bunch of emails and people going to his talks, people protesting his talks because they thought he was the Antichrist and so forth. And he had no idea what was going on. And he said he had no idea what was going on. And when asked if he was Maitreyi, he said no. (laughs) And Benjamin Krem even had to step in and do exactly what he didn't want to do. And he did it for Raj Patel's benefit uh, is because he had to come out and say that that's not Maitreyi. Now, Ben said that if, when asked, he would not confirm nor deny it, and Maitreya would not confirm it nor deny being Maitreya. So had somebody asked Ben about somebody else, is that Maitreya? And even if they were right, he would, say, he would have, he, there was nothing he could say. He would always just point back, what do you think? That's how he would, he would deflect it back to that person. But he might say to himself, yeah, he got it right, or no, he's way off, or whatever like that. But he actually had to step in and say no. Of course, you know, everybody who knew Ben knew that that's not what he wanted to do. He didn't want to be put in that position, but he had to for Raj Patel. The, the other thing is, <clears throat> you know, more than likely, a lot of us have already seen Maitreya on TV and just not recognized him because he speaks so simply. And he's a master at being able to speak esoteric truths without really having it sound like an esoteric truth. <laughs> You know, the times that I saw Maitreya in my life, he never once claimed to be Maitreya. I had to recognize him as Maitreya. But before I recognized him as Maitreya, most of the time I recognized what he said and the truth of what he said. And it rocked my world. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. And then I started thinking back, that might have been him. And then I asked Benjamin Cram and then he finally said yes. But I, Benjamin, uh, Maitreya never came to me and said, I'm Maitreya, you need to listen to me. Never once. And he'll never do that. Even after he's out known for who he is, he won't say something like that. So it, that's a human thing that we do, that, that we'll eventually learn not to do too. But right now we all do it to that degree, to some degree. But anyway, if you look at, for instance, Bach, Mozart, right, as being Renaissance musicians, or Leonardo da Vinci, or Raphael, or Rembrandt as a Renaissance painter, or Shakespeare as a Renaissance writer... Every one of those gentlemen of our historical figures of the past, when they, whether they painted, played, you know, wrote music or wrote literature, within their, you know, their art is teachings about the laws of life. So when people hear Bach, they just hear music most of the time. They're not thinking of it from the standpoint that he's actually teaching them about the laws of life, just as the Master DK was doing through Alice Bailey in the writings of Alice Bailey, or if you read Benjamin Krem and reading about the laws of life that his master was giving through him and so forth out into the world. The exact same way, just very simply through music. Or if you go to a museum and you stand in front of a Leonardo da Vinci painting, he couldn't help but do that because of of who he was and how advanced he was. He was nearly a master when he painted the Mona Lisa. So when people stand in front of the Mona Lisa, there are tremendous amounts of esoteric truths within that painting. The light emanating from that painting is amazing, but it's a simple painting of a woman barely smiling. You know what I mean? Not even showing any teeth. It doesn't even have a lot of color, but yet millions upon millions of people flock to that painting subconsciously because of who and what painted it. And that was Leonardo da Vinci was nearly a master painting that painting. And then if you look at Shakespeare, right? People I've had to read Shakespeare in school. Did you read Shakespeare in school uh, through the eyes of the Ageless Wisdom teachings? Because all throughout his stories are teachings about overcoming fear, overcoming glamour, the illusion that we all have to suffer through from long identification and so forth, through other esoteric truths and so forth, are all written throughout his stuff, his, his literature. But most people don't see it from that standpoint. So... Maitreya speaking on TV is doing the exact same thing, speaking very simply to people, speaking those same esoteric truths, 
that you can get from reading Benjamin Krem's master talking about Maitreya's priorities or even hearing the, reading the, the Laws of Life book that goes into great depth about Maitreya's priorities for humanity, his teachings, and so forth. But yet he's speaking to everyday people in a very simple way. But eventually he'll start to increase his rhetoric, not rhetoric, but his, his speaking, his speech to the point where people will start to be picking up more and more on the fact that that might be Maitreya. Because when he does declare himself as Maitreya on the Day of Declaration, it will be because the vast majority of people will demand from the news media him time to speak to everyone. So there must be, there will have to be some kind of interest in what he's saying, which right now there isn't as much interest in that, to have him be able to come out like that. So hopefully that helps. But Mr. Good Sleep and everyone listening to this, don't try to find any interviews with Maitreya. You'll see him when you see him in your own time. And then you'll recognize him when you recognize him in your own time, not a day before or not a day after. I think it's more important to really educate yourself better about the priorities of Maitreya. It will definitely make it easier for you to recognize him when you do, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully that helps. All right. Next question comes from Mark Hill. The teachings of Jesus really are in line with the teachings of Maitreya. Have a question, though. Does it irritate anyone else that most of the New Testament is just this one dude, Paul, telling everyone else what Jesus' actions and ministries are really about? <laughs> well put, Mark. Well put. Um, the reason why teachings of Jesus and the teachings of Maitreya are in line is because they're coming from the same source. You know, same thing with the Bhagavad Gita, same thing with the Quran, you know, same thing with the the Buddhist texts, there's, they're all coming from the same source. That's the reason why there's, if you, if you were able to sift away all the illusion and all the distortions within those religious texts, they would all be the same. You know, it, the only difference is the ideology, ideological differences that of the people who wrote them, you know what I mean? And so Paul being one of them, right? I, I, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily irritate me, but I mean, it it definitely, I have to, take what he says with a grain of salt. He never met my, he never met Jesus, you know, historically, right? He came in after Jesus had already died, you know? And so if you look at the, the 12 disciples, uh, from what I understand it, the, the number 12 and the reason why he had 12 disciples that were close to him had to do with the 12 tribes of Israel, if I'm not mistaken. And when Judas committed suicide that left 11 and he replaced Judas in that for that 12 but he never was around Jesus's you know in, in Palestine listening to him speak and really was able to ask him questions in that way he was just kind of coming at it now Paul was very advanced he was on par with John and James and Peter very very advanced disciple he would have probably been one of Jesus' closest disciples had he been around him at that time. But he was he was a fanatic at the same time. He's now a great master, will be one of the masters introduced not long after Maitreya is out known for who he is. And working in the scientific community, from what I understand it, because um, he's a uh, what's called a fifth ray, is a master on the fifth ray, which is the, the ray of scientific... Um, the scientist is on that ray and so forth, but we, we don't really talk about rays that much on this channel. Try to keep it simple. But anyway, for those who know the rays, he's a fifth ray master, but um, he was very fanatical, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if you have to, you have to kind of sift through a lot of what he said and the distortions of what he said based on his own prejudice toward women, prejudice toward homosexuals, prejudice toward other people and so forth to kind of sift through the, the teachings of it. But, you know, to his credit, you know, he if it wasn't for him, I don't think any one of us any one of us would have ever heard of Jesus. So you have to kind of look at like take what Maitreya said to me and apply it to Paul, you know. Don't judge him on whether he is good or bad, just notice the good things that he did. And one of the good things that he did is he brought the teachings of Jesus to the world, really. As well as Peter did, as well as John did, if not better. You know, even though he didn't know him, you know, suffered, of course, for it, was imprisoned for it, died for it, and that kind of thing. So 
But yeah, I don't think he's somebody that would have necessarily been fun to have a drink with. <laughs> it's not known for his humor, I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm known for my humor. I'm kidding. No, I, you know, he, he was a tough cookie for sure. But yeah, he, uh, the, the, he, he also brought in a lot of distortions into the teachings of Jesus because of his fanaticism, of his zeal, of, of his, pro, you know, problems. And when we talk about historical figures like Paul or any one of them, they're not perfect. They're, on, they're well on their way to become a perfect master, you know, but they're not perfect. And what happens is, is when you, when you become more advanced like that, you exert a tremendous amount of influence and power in the world, whether it's in whatever field it is. It could be anything from architecture to art to science to religion to spirituality or whatever. It could be anything. Politics. And whatever little problem you have, because we all have, have at least one. That's what separates us from the masters. We're all, we all have a fault of some kind. It can really do a lot of damage in the world because of the power that they exert. You know, if he was just an ordinary person with that kind of, you know, religious zeal, you know, and and dogma and, you know, do, being dogmatic about his beliefs in the way that he was, he wouldn't have, it wouldn't have had nearly as much damage to the world in the, you know, now, the, you know, all th- from the time that he died and, and gave out his, his, his the teachings to now, it wouldn't have been nearly as destructive. But at the same time, the good that he did wouldn't nearly have had the influence on the world that it did at, you know, since he gave those teachings out. So very important to look at, at when we look at historical figures that are very advanced disciples, to understand that they're not perfect, that they do good in the world to some degree. They also do a tremendous amount of harm to some degree. A lot of times they don't even see what they're doing in terms of their harm because of that. But also to understand that, you know, we all got that to look forward to ourselves because <laughs> that's where we're headed. You know, we're all headed to that stage before we become a master anyway. So maybe by now kind of learning it and seeing it, maybe we can avoid the pitfalls that they fell into because he didn't have the advantage of being educated in the way that, that we're going to be educated by these masters in the future to be able to avoid those kind of pitfalls. But yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Mark, but I, I really do appreciate you bringing it up. But anyway, you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. And remember to thank take you action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Thank you.